All right. We're we're, we are recording now. Nice. A little bit extra in the beginning too. Stop that, being such that a jerk. Complete though. nonsense. Well, you should actually increase jerk levels so people know the truth. He hits me on these road trips. That's true. This is why I use the camera now. Gotta hit something. <laughs> uh, it's moving attack. And I'm Jason. And this is Tom. Hi, everybody. And that's Andrew. Uh, that's right. There's three of us this time around. So there's a little bit more opinion. Uh, so this is our show where, you know, we, we have that little link that we put in our description uh, where you can submit questions, and when we're on these road trips to tournaments, we answer those questions. And today, we're on our way to New York States. This is the uh, States and Provincials season, as it were, and we're, we're, we're going down south because, uh, for one, it's not too far. Yep. Uh, two, I can't make it to Ontario Provincials because I'm being a guy who's cooking on WrestleMania weekend, so... I am. By the way, Tom, you're, you, you, I'm, I'm making food. Oh, I was gonna say, do you want to bring pizza? I'll just bring beer then. <laughs> yeah, just bring, just bring liquid food. All right. That's fair. That's um, anyway, so yeah, we're on our way to New York, and it's time to answer some of the questions. Hamburg, uh, New York, WNY Gaming, big thumbs up. Uh, I had a great experience with them a couple weeks ago. Home of the hamburger. <laughs> Not true. No. I presume it's from Hamburg, Germany. Is this where they actually call it steamed hams? <laughs> <laughs> Amber's little laugh in the background while she's not looking anywhere even remotely forward. So I now got the side of her head in frame. All right. So our first first two sets of questions come from Mr. Malcolm Rush. And he likes to go throw his punches and punches, as it were. <laughs> um, and the first set is actually a speed round. It was hard for me really not to think about this at a time while I was writing it down. Hang on. Let me increase speed. Well, no, 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 not you. You don't have to increase speed. <laughs> you just have to answer very quickly. Oh, okay. And it's all a series of top three lists. So how can you answer quickly and rank? All right. right. Let's find out. Let, Tom, you and me can't. It's impossible. That's true. <laughs> um, but his first his first, quest, his first, top three he wants to know. It's the top three hero clicks that changed the game. Who first? Uh, who wants to go first? Amber, go first this round. <laughs> um, Icon Superman, Felix Faust, and... <laughs> Spiral. Spiral. There we go. Yeah. Anyway, do you have any objections to that list? Because that's basically my list. <laughs> yeah, like I was considering Ben Crawler. Ben Crawler didn't really change hero clicks. No. He just sort of was really good at hero clicks and yeah. dominated for a while. Uh, Justice League team base, I would add to that. Uh, yeah. Justice, yeah, there we go. I thought that after I said Spiral. And then I was like, oh, but Spiral and then like the heroes for hire only became a thing because of team bases. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, I'm kind of on board with this. Oh, man. Icon Superman changed the rules for hypersonic. Yeah. <laughs> I think this makes sense. Have yeah. one person do the speed round, and then other people can just throw it if they think it's Absolutely. Important. All right. So the next one's going to be you, Tom. All right, I'm into it. Top three resources of all time. Uh, Green Lantern battery, um, the bat belt, and the uh, book of skulls. Hey, cool. Amber, any objections? Uh, I think the Infinity Gauntlet was a little more prominent for me than the Bat Belt, but the Bat Belt also helped rewrite rules. So. Right. I mean, the Infinity Gauntlet was the only one for a while, so it was certainly yeah. prominent, but it was completely like slam dunked on by the Bat Belt when it came out. In yeah. Book of so. Skulls is still the best for my, like, even though the, the, the batteries like dominated for so long, yeah. Book of the Skull was just like point click go smash face. You can also make an argument that orange battery was worse than green, but I think green had, well, green had longer tenure. And yeah. I think it was all in all slightly more impactful. Absolutely. I agree with all this. Okay, I'm going to take this one. Okay. Top three equipment and relics. Interesting. It is a, it's a difficult one, just off the top of my head. <laughs> Especially uh, Mjolnir sits on that list, though, for sure. Free or 10 point? Both Mew Mews. <laughs> 10 point Mew Mew. I mean, the character that he's free on is. Uh, He's great. Well, no, I mean the one that was free with Hammer Thor. Oh, no, 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 no. Not, not the free one. The, the, the new one, Mighty Thor. Okay. The Mighty Thor. Okay, that's one. Uh, that's one. Uh, well, we're going to go with... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a tie on one of these. It's symbiotes. Both of them. Okay. Very good. Might as well just say six points. Four point. Yeah. Give it time, but it's not good. Mm. Um, and Exospecs. 
just that flexibility. I, this one's going to be one where there's a little bit more room to argue with because, you know, there's honorable mentions in there for the octopus arms, especially right now, given the state of the game well, that we're making this episode. Of, Crimson Gem of Sidorak was everywhere in the yeah. pre-resource days. Yeah. Absolutely. It was on basically every team. Yeah. So. I think that's a hard list to say only because when it comes down to it, relics and equipments are vastly different. Even though they kind of like seem like the same thing, they are vastly different game elements right. in the way yeah. that how relics had to be played versus how equipment are just added on now. And I guess we're not counting like the dumpster because the dumpster was everywhere for a while, but oh, it was yeah. a special object specifically. That, that was, yeah, that was there for a while. I mean, even then though, the dumpster kind of does the Doc Ock arms do now. <laughs> Indestructible the, heavy objects. Yeah, true. Although, I mean, at least it gets destroyed if you use it in an object. Yeah, yeah. That's true. All right, Amber, this is going to be yours. Top three sets of all time. This one's gonna be the actually this one's gonna be the most opinionated, I think. Yeah. Well, yeah, definitely, because I mean top three sets for me are like um I would probably say fa Fantastic Forces and um uh like either Uncanny X-Men or Xavier's school. And then maybe mm, I don't even know. Legion of Superheroes, but that's like very much my uh, opinion. Like that's very mm -hmm. biased. Yeah, yeah, it's an interesting think question. Like if you were to try to, because there is no such thing as, as a purely objective answer. But if you were trying to encroach upon a more objective basis, like what would you be looking for? We're talking about like what produced the most pieces that were impactful in the meta game for the longest time. I, I don't know. Okay. Wolverine and the X Men would be on that list for sure at that point. Mm -hmm. I think Amazing Spider-Man definitely sits on that it list for me. Created the, the, it created the watch list, essentially, that's it. Then. Yeah, that's fair. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, what would your top three be, Tom? Personally, like my favorite yeah. three? Um, well, Honorable Mitch is going to have to go to Incredible Hulk. I didn't actually think it was a great set, but I loved Hulk, so I collected the whole thing. Yep. Um, Giant Size X-Men is probably one of them, the first Super Booster set. Mm -hmm. uh, that was pretty awesome. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's hard. Uh, it actually, it's, 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 it's really hard. Yeah. For for me, uh, especially, I'm gonna I'm gonna date mine based on the time and the memory of the sets. Uh, one of my favorites, still Explosion, because in the time of Explosion, Explosion was such a great set. It had a little bit of everything, including a lot of X Men. Um, filled in a lot of spaces that the X Men were lacking and made for really cool X Men teams. But it also added us to like in the competitive game, the con artist uh, at the time. Uh, so. I like the explosion. Um, Amazing Spider-Man. I love that set because Brother Voodoo, and, and it, like it was, it turned out to be like the the, the magical set, also with some weird, really weird nerd named Spider-Man. Right. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then there was a I'm trying to remember. There was one set that was like I'm going to collect this for sure, beyond a shadow of a doubt. And I want to say it was Wolverine and the X-Men actually. Yeah. Yeah. It's a really good one. I mostly want to collect it for her. Because <laughs> I love her. Uh, what's next? It's me. Yeah, next you is you. Oh, perfect. All right. Top three maps of all time. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. The cartographer himself. Again, like, is it? Are we talking personal? I'm gonna try to go more, um, more like uh, Impact game level. level. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I, I would definitely go with. Which one was which? Was Ryu the one with all the blocking? Or? Ryu was all the one with all with, was the one with all the elevated. Okay, so that what was the one with all the blocking? Uh, <laughs> in, that, in that time? Yeah, of the of the War of Light. Of the War of Light, because I think they the both blocking. belong on there. Um, um, it was the Indigo Temple. It's, no, it's basically the one that had the, the pillars where you could go and take damage, and there was also just blocking. Yeah, okay, it was the Indigo, Indigo Temple. Sure. So that. Um, I don't remember the name of it. <laughs> hmm, other than that, it's, it, 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 those were so big for so long. You know, like, we're currently living in a world where the maps are pretty overwhelming. So, like, yeah. the Rock Underground probably belongs on that list, too. Yep. I'm going to add his failure to mention Krakoa. Yeah, Krakoa <laughs> was gimmicky, but it was big. Yeah, it, it, it ruined the Rock for a while. Because they, because of Krakoa, they disallowed all orange rules on maps, and it's like, well, certain maps don't function on that way if you put right. them on the board. So, anyone out there, Amber? Yes, um, I'm trying to remember what set it came from because it's really, really old. Um, with the junkyard. 
I was going to mention the Joker uh, too. It's yeah, my Armor Wars. I it's think it's arguably my favorite map of all time, even though it's one of the first, it was like the first one with Mark Terrain. Oh no, sorry, it would be Avengers. Avengers was that? Set, no, it was before, no, that. Was before it, that. Okay, so then I'm probably right with Armor Wars. I think it was um, like Armor Wars Critical Mass, yeah. maybe. Yeah, because I remember that being like the one map where, because this was before any improved movement came in, and if you didn't fly. You had to work so hard to get across that map because there was actually like a two square row Strip. of hindering directly across the map and if you could not ignore hindering you stopped. It also had Instantly. indoor and outdoor, it had elevated, like that yeah, map had everything. it had, had a everything. little bit of everything. I yeah. love that map. I still love that map. Yep. Mind you, the, what was the, what was the prison that was also super restrictive? I don't know if it was actually uh, prison. Prison 42? Was it? There was another one that was from the the real the old era that the, pre, the, the pre yeah. pre uh, the, the Ben Crawler kill box yeah that yeah where basically it was like a bunch of yeah. blocking or walled in cells yeah yeah it <laughs> may have just been called the prison yeah I think yeah. you're right it may have <laughs> they were pretty boring the back then when it came to map names do you remember the one that did come out in the actual Avengers set which was the tank sitting in the middle of it which oh, was yeah. blocking and that was the Cosmic Spider-Man yeah map. I remember and that now shoot out the blocking and then sit there and then hypersonic out from it yep like I, a jerk I remember that one that, that one came around the same time as the uh, the Galactus tournament started the, yes, the coming of true. Galactus well it was that was, coming of Galactus was with the Avengers yeah. set really so. yeah. yeah that was really Avengers had uh, coming of Galactus and Justice League had uh, the invasion of Starro yeah you know th I gotta say something about coming of Galactus it really set the standard for the way uh, tournaments were run then they, where they had those summer events at this right. period and it, they would all be sealed but you'd get a figure from each of them and be able to use it in your sealed. Nobody cared about that. You'd be allowed to use one in the in the future. I, I thought it was really cool, but the problem was they chained, I, I don't know, they, sometimes they would break the game and I'd, the one uh, figure would find its way all there. If we're talking mass, I'd like to throw out one honorable mention that never had a huge impact, but it was only just due to when it came out. If you released it tomorrow, it would be one of the staples of certain types of game builds. I can't remember what it was called, but the Watchmen set had a map where your starting areas were on the uh, the horizontals, like not at the ends of the map, oh. but you were started opposite to each other. So you started four, uh, 12 squares away from each other, basically, if you Weird. account for, the, for the, the size. Yeah, you started on either side rather than either end. We didn't um, end up having that one, actually. That would be a huge impact if it were released today. Oh, yeah. Can you imagine making your starting areas that close together? Well, I mean, at the, given the, the way the game runs right now. The, right, well, you're already, like, building teams that basically cross the whole map. Yeah. But now you've got the ability to build teams where single characters can cross the whole map. Uh, it would be crazy. All right. I guess I'm next on this one. Go for it. Uh, top three people you enjoy playing the game with. Wow. Interesting. You, look, you might as well exonerate people in the car because otherwise you'll feel guilty if you don't mention them. I mean... Oh, I, I don't know. I hate playing with Jason. I was going to say, <laughs> me and Amber hate playing against each other. Right, fair point. That's what, in tournaments. We love playing yes. at home. In tournaments, we, we, we hate it. So I was, about to, I was about to pull an Aiden and swear. <laughs> um, I do love playing with Tom, though. Yeah. Every time we play in the tournaments, there, there's slug, slug fests. Uh, and we're always gentlemen about it. I swear. <laughs> well, who else? Uh, I'm working on that, actually. I was kind of working on that. Howard Brock is a joy to play with. Um, he's the he's the nicest, mean old man I've ever met. <laughs> Only mean because he got more angry at my dice than I did. Fair. Actually, I, I kind of... That's a that's a, uh, a trend. Because I have two people who, I, who are on this list that have done that to me. Right. Howard Brock being one of them. I, Howard Brock was mad at me the year he won World because I... Missed so many attacks. He's like, I swear to God, Jason, if you miss this one, I'm gonna be so angry. <laughs> and then my my third one is Chris Dockhouse because we've had a lot of matches with each other as well. And he was so angry at me when I called my shot on a failure because <laughs> it was when you, you you showed we were both playing your Mary Marvel team. Yep. Uh, and my Mary Marvel was based to one of his dudes. And I said, okay, so here's what's gonna happen. I need to break away with Mary Marvel to make this turn work. And I need my prop. But the problem is, I'm going to miss my breakaway roll on the one. I'm going to have to use my prop for that. And then what's worse is I'm going to fail that prop, that breakaway roll too. I'm going to be stuck here and ruin the entire game for myself. And I called every ounce of that shot. <laughs> to the point where Chris was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> he was so angry that I, I think he was more angry that I called the shot. Right. And then, then the outcome. Then the actual outcome. Yeah. <laughs> That and of course, I, I spent a lot of time during those days, definitely having some bad dice, right. and I was 
very public about how bad my dice had been for a period of time during that. I'm I'm not quite over the hump where like dice are really kind of let me down at points, but I'm not helping myself with a team with characters with nine attack on it. So, yeah. <laughs> Any, anybody you wanted to throw a shout out to, Tom? Well, I would throw it Emily. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, she's, win or lose, she's always yeah, she's smiling. She just um, loves Hero Click. She's happy to be here. I would also throw out Trevor Vassar. Oh, I've, oh, yeah. I've had lots of great experiences playing with Trevor. He's a really good player, but he's also really fun. Doesn't take it too seriously. Yeah. And I'm, I would throw out Matty G. Uh, I've played several <laughs> games against Matty G. And we've exchanged victories back and forth. And in that case, it's just like, you know, he, he plays to win. Uh, and I'm happy to play to win against him. And, uh, and I think we have a good a good sort of uh, heat going. So. I know one of Adam's answers, or Amber's answers. I, well, I yeah, kind of your spoiler answer alert, is yeah. like I always, and I've me I mentioned it on the last movement attack too. Is that I absolutely love playing against Adam. Um, but yeah, uh, going off with Tom is like Emily is like the one person I will line up to get beat by. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't think I've ever actually won a game against her, but losing to her is so amazing because she's just so well thought out in what she's doing, and she's always so happy about it. I think the only time I've ever seen her upset was we got paired up against each other at Canadian Nationals in the final round where she had to beat me to get qualified for the next day and she's like, I don't want to do it. <laughs> I've already beat you once today. I don't want to do it again. <laughs> I would, uh, I'm also going to echo your, your Chris statement and PJ as well. Yeah. I, I love PJ. He's an incredible player. Uh, playing against him, you, you learn a lot. I, I it's, played, fun, it's fun to still learn, you know? I played one game against PJ and he curb stomped me so hard. That's what he does, but yeah. that's how you learn. <laughs> you can't even be mad at the little ginger for it. <laughs> Alright, next up. I don't know, I, this one I have to kind of pose to the car. I, I, I don't okay. think Amber should take a turn on this because she hasn't taken as much Hero Clicks content as my, some of us. Okay. Actually, you know what though? I, I remember there was a caveat on this one. It can be our own. Our favorite, Amber, your top three episodes of our show. Um, or any podcast that you might have heard as well. Dude, I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> Can you think of an episode that was like, oh my god, that was so fun or so awesome? I mean, for me, I love the... Um, there's like an... Uh, was it there was a game really, really early on where I beat you with like Asgardian Trolls? Yes, I remember that one. You played troll. I like. I played a weird version of George's team from uh, from World with the Black Adam, and right. you just thumped on me with uh, with the trolls from Fear itself. I remember yeah, that it was game. Just like yeah. a team of Asgardian trolls in the Book of Skulls, and like that's all it was was just throwing hammers down on trolls and smashing face. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I think that's uh, that's one. That's why. Yeah, the I top three episodes. Boy, that's yeah. near well, impossible. It, it can be other podcasts too. I'm only posing our podcast to Amber because well, she hasn't taken as I much mean, content uh, as if us. If the question was top three podcasts, then I think that it, you can have somebody to talk about. But top three episodes of a podcast? Yeah, episodes I have no, of. Idea. I have no idea. Considering they all kind of blend together, especially like, that's the nature of podcasting, right? Yeah. It's a lot of. Especially uh, when they're weekly. Like, how much do you really consume? Yeah. Yeah, fair. I, I actually have some. Some of them are ours, and some of them are are uh, others. Right. Um, one of my favorite episodes of podcast because it's one of the most delicious pieces of hindsight is where we all said Faust isn't going to do anything. That's true. Yeah. We all did that. Uh, I think that was also the same episode where, uh, where Tom turned around and said the skull ship was the best four hundred point character he'd ever set. Yeah. yeah probably they were released together. That was that was, uh, that was one of my that was up there with mine. Uh, the, and this one's a little, little uh, self, self pleasuring, as it were. Uh, <laughs> uh, the episode of uh, Shots Fired podcast was just me and a, I think it was Jamie on the show. Just recently, right? It was just recently. Yeah, it was good because when we got to the shot fires portion, I felt so good about yelling at internet commenters because oh man, did it feel good to yell! <laughs> I like that podcast. I do want to add in that I actually really enjoyed my time on Shots Fired because it's the only podcast so far that had me on as a guest that wasn't like, hey, you're a girl in Heroclix, want to be on our podcast with all the other girls on Heroclix? Like, honestly, I love, I love the, the Mr. Clicks Fix and Clicks Off, and I love having the female round table. I've done it like three or four times now, but it felt a lot better to just be like, hey, you're a Heroclix player, come on our podcast. 
rather than being like, let's get all the girls together and we'll have a girl special right. hero book so podcast. Much like it's yeah, <laughs> it was it's selfish, but it's like this one was about me and I like it more. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Um, there was a. And there's so many episodes of Dial H for Hero Clicks that I always get a good chuckle out of too. Yeah. Like I gotta give, I want to give all those shoutouts. Uh, Dark Logos and the Starting Over podcast is such a great thing to listen. He's got such good advice when it comes to yeah, like it, everything. There are like my staples of podcast listening within Hero Clicks are uh, Starting Over, uh, Critical Clicks, uh, Shots Fired, and Clicks Off. I mean, uh, there I've enjoyed Dial H at various times. I'm sure there are others that just don't like. I'm not very plugged in, <laughs> yeah. So it's a miracle that I've even heard of the things I have heard of. Uh, oh, I, I guess it would be silly if I wasn't to mention Two Clicks from KO, which is like still arguably the best. I, I just love Two Clicks. Yeah, I love uh, Aaron, and his, when, ever since he added Aries, it's such a delight. Yeah, yeah, it's great. I really there's so much good content out there. Why are you watching this? <laughs> well, watch this, and then when you're done, go watch, go check out that other stuff. There's lots of hours in the week, and you know, you can just throw on some headphones and listen to a lot. Of, a lot of these are audio and Majestics so. when they come out. Yeah, it's less common, but I really enjoy the Majestics. Uh, Majestics episodes come out about as frequently as I give Majestics articles. <laughs> Sad but true. It's not shots fired. It's I'm bad at giving them articles. And, they're about as frequent as getting episodes out. They, I think we all understand that. Yeah, that's that. like shots fired while still in the holster. Ow. Yeah. <laughs> hey, oh, my foot! <laughs> I should probably be writing more for them. I mean, you know, but I advertise for them, so. <laughs> all right, next up, and I'm going to let Tom do this one because he's, uh, sure. what are your favorite podcast guests? So guests we've had on the show, um, you know, either episodes you were part of or my champ chats or whatever. Top. Uh, guests, yeah. Uh, Pedro definitely. Uh, he's yeah. been a, a frequent. Uh, at one point, he was so frequent, it's almost, he was almost more like a quasi host than a guest. Um, yes, he, was, he was actually my replacement for a period of time, even though Jay was running things behind the scene. But yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely uh, Pedro because he's just he's a really good mind for the game, and he also brings in a perspective that is at least geographically separate from uh, most of the people that we're dealing with on a day to day basis. Yep. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of other people because you've talked to so many of them over so much time. I know. I mean, Pat, uh, I would say, oh, is yeah. still a luminary for the game. Uh, and uh, and I would say the same for George. Uh, like, they're both... Pat and George are, are similar in the perspective, from the perspective that they're, they're both older school guys uh, who really have an amazing head for the game and a great perspective uh, over time. And arguably are, you know, if there was a Mount Rushmore of hero clicks, they would both be on it, so... Anybody wanted to add, or um, actually, yeah, because uh, there, I think what your champ chat with Isaac was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it was you really know what? Because Isaac wasn't very self-serving. <laughs> yeah, he it's, was just like, yep. he's ten. Yep, that I did that. <laughs> yep. Oh, okay, cool. You don't have want to elaborate. You're yeah, right. You're yeah. Young. He's got that unpretentious <laughs> air, which yeah. is just, and it's not even just that he's he's young. I think that's also just the, kind of the way he is, and I hope he yeah. always will be, because uh, we've had a chance to see him grow up at least a little bit, and like he, he remains that guy. Yeah. Um, also, there is, and I'm trying to remember what it was, there's a very rare episode of our patron hangout where Jason wasn't there at the beginning, and I had to start it on my own, and I was joined by David Gosselman, and I want to say one more person, and like the start of it before Jason showed up ended up just being like me and the guys just talking for like an hour, like not even about hero clicks, we just spend the first hour of the of the uh, patron hangout just like talking about anything and wagon. it's a really good time to just kind of sit there and just talk and like not even like we weren't even answering questions or anything like we normally do on our patron hangout it was just it was basically just a, an actual hangout like just chatting and it was a lot of fun and I don't even remember why Jason wasn't there but I was doing work. this on my own <laughs> it was work at the time oh, okay yeah Anybody else? Or are you, are you good? Uh, lots of people. Uh, I'm, I'm, yeah, no, I, I think that's... Uh, that's it. The ones that haven't mentioned that I definitely got a ton of enjoyment out of. Adam Friedman, because yeah. my job was easy. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Adam, talk about this. And I could just leave the room and we'd be good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Scott Crampton, because he's an entertainer. He is. And as a result, he became entertaining. That's awesome. <laughs> um... And I liked Tyler Spies. 
I really enjoyed it too. I was wondering, I was like, is it too new? Is it too fresh? Uh, <laughs> too soon? Uh, but I really thought he did a great uh, JF Chat. I've, I've also seen him on Majestics and a few others, and like, he's really quite well spoken, uh, and he has a great sort of mind in the game. He's comparatively new for the people who are really at the very top echelon of Heroclix at the moment. Uh, obviously, just completely knocking it out of the park at the moment. But he's also just, I like the, I love, I love his manner and the way in which he thinks about the game. It's nicely rounded and, and balanced. It was like a better me. <laughs> I said rounded and balanced. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> I said better. <laughs> Jeez. All right. This one is a pretty simple one, and it's Tom's turn to start. Oh, it's yours. I oh, is it mine? Yeah. All right. Powers and abilities you like. Uh, sidestep. Uh, prob probability control and perplex. Sidestep for the movement, perplex because it makes it easier to hit, and prob because I miss a lot. <laughs> That's fair. Yep. Tom, are you uh, in the same same ball right there? Yeah, I mean, I guess there's a ton of powers and abilities yeah. that I like. Um, and you, know, this is always the one where you're, you're tempted to call out ones that are very situational, but when they work, then you're real happy. Like force blast. Like whenever I get to actually use force blast as a power action. Um, but no, I think, eh, invincible. Fair enough. Hey, Amber? Mine's actually going to work together because my favorite combo is charge blades flurry, or charge flurry blades. <laughs> yeah. So just put that all together. Yep, yeah, that's There's fair. There's the three powers. Good call. All right, and the last one in the speed round top three things you enjoy about Hero Clicks. That's uh, going to be for everybody. Amber, you can start though. People. Okay. There's three things there. I no, mean, that's, it. that's, that's uh, all three people, of them. Yeah. The, the people. Three specific people. people, people. people. <laughs> we, we, we three. There we go. Just that. This is all I like about Hero Clicks. Just this card. No. <laughs> Chomp. Um, it's going to be, it's a, it's a speed round, but it's a kind of a wordy answer. Okay. Um, it's the fact that Heroclix has is an enriching competitive experience that doesn't become a toxic social one. Like I find the ability to switch on and off in this game works better than I haven't played a lot of other tabletop games, but certainly in a video gaming setting or something. People don't tend to be, even though you know this week there's evidence to the contrary. But for the most part, <laughs> people don't tend to get super butthurt about things, and they can kind of turn on their competitive brain, have a competitive matchup in which we all both understand what's what's you know what we're doing and, and there's no uh, you know scarring of egos or singeing of feelings uh, and then switch it back off again when the game's over and continue on in a social setting so I mean that's like an expanded version of people but it's the specific way in which this game we can drop in and out of that setting without carrying the baggage between favorite thing about hero clicks being able to hear Tom say the word but her <laughs> <laughs> that's why we started the podcast Amber yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's all. The one more thing off the bucket list of things we gotta get Tom to say. <laughs> but yeah, I like that that is casually competitive, so there's no money on the lines. But there's really just kind of bragging rights and toys, more toys, right. as it were, to play with their toys. Um, it is about comics, uh, and yeah, I think uh, the people and general in general is just. It, this is the game where it's the, this is the best people I've played with. I played competitive Magic, competitive Versus. Um, something about games that are based on comics seem to bring out the best in people. Yeah. Because that's something I didn't notice about Versus System. Okay. Speed round's done. Woo. Woo. Those are that fast. Yeah. It became the usual uh, conversation <laughs> round. Exactly. We'll turn everything into a, into a conversation round. Absolutely. Again. And now the next set of questions all revolve around don't die stuff. Okay. So... Um, hopefully our answers aren't as long as the games you have to play against that kind of stuff. Oh, <laughs> oh. Burn, sort of. All right. Um, so the first question is, what do you think are the best and worst don't die figures? All time or currently? Uh, I think it's all time. Yeah, Malcolm tends to ask at all times. It's a hard one, right? It is. Because you're like, it's probably Resurrection Man, isn't it? Resurrection Man is probably just one of the best, I think, yeah. Um, but I still think, I still think, ah, oh, Joker. Is, my, is the king of that mountain for me because it's funny it's not that he doesn't die but he just gives you such a feeling of futility yeah even wanting to attack him that he might as well not die and yet you know if you're if you plan strategically especially since they've watched this and he's forced to make the rolls if you're if you really know the dial and you're counting your damage and you're thinking it through and always trying to leave him on click one or whatever like trying to get him to cross the line but to cross it by as little of a margin as possible. I have placed my damage down before against Joker, uh, just because I wanted to make sure that 
their subsequent roll would put them deeper into the dial uh, so that you've got a better chance next time and whatnot. Like, I think that that's, they, he's probably the most effective because he he, uh, he makes you not want to attack him at all and he lasts for so long that he truly pretty much never dies. But there is a strategic manner in which to approach facing him uh, in a way that most don't die is basically just keep on hitting it until it's finally gone or in the case of like the resurrection man, dead man things, it was like, don't bother until you've killed everything else. Until you've killed everything else, you know, which is more one-dimensional and annoying. And worst, we'll just throw that in there. Yeah, dead man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he seemed so cool, but all he did was resurrection man, but worse. Yeah, yeah. Any input on that one ever? Uh, yeah. Even uh, before and after watch listing Bizarro. Oh yeah, true. Bizarro, Bizarro was Bizarro. great. Yeah. Um, even after he got watch listed and he was only allowed to be at a certain point level and he couldn't heal his tokens back, uh, he was still just, he was a fun piece to play and I was never too angry going up against him. Um, I think that was really the only like don't die tech that like never really pissed me off when I saw it across the table. <laughs> um, and I, the idea, but never the application because it got mm. nerfed before even really went anywhere was the White Queen and her cuckoos. Because just the idea of playing that team, I was really excited to actually play that. I was planning to bring that to Canadian Nationals that year. And then like almost instantly they're like, oh, we did this bad. <laughs> <laughs> this can't work the way it says it works. Let's just completely change it. And then she like didn't, not necessarily became completely unplayable, but definitely wasn't being played the way that uh, everybody was like, oh my god, this white queen is never going to die sort of thing. Right. Yeah. I remember that, and I remember we had to get, pull out two white queens for your team on that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anything you wanted to add to the worst? Oh, the worst? Yeah. Um, no, I can't, I can't think of one right now. Okay. So we're all going to stick with dead men. <laughs> sure. All right, what are your favorite "Don't Die" figures, and or any, and if if you happen to have one, "Don't Die" teams? That's pretty. Uh, that's a pretty nuanced. Really, it is yeah. very. I, I kind of put Resurrection Man on a favorite. Is I'm gonna put Lockjaw on it as my favorite. Okay, and Amber, favorite. <laughs> I'm gonna be funny and put on Jonathan the Wolverine. <laughs> <laughs> he will eventually die, but it's gonna take you some time. Yeah. I, as for um, as for favorite "Don't Die" teams. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, plead the fifth or whatever. I'm not American, so I don't actually know. Um, but I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't have one. Uh, no, because I don't tend to build don't die teams. I just like building teams that often have a don't die element. I just don't like them myself. <laughs> Probably a good time to take a yeah, pause. Yeah, we're gonna have to take a pause because we're coming up on the border right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're, they're like, well, what are we playing? Like uh, hero clicks? It's uh, like a, it's like you know, a game with little like plastic figures, like superhero little plastic superheroes. <laughs> like, so you play with toys. <laughs> yeah, it's basically we're just we're playing. With, like I became increasingly embarrassed as I was trying to describe <laughs> what it was. And I'm like, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> so by comparison, I've got it all down to a science now. Yeah. At this point, it's like, yeah, I'm going for fucking hero clicks, man. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So. We're now we're still we're still on don't die tech. We're over the border. Uh, we're not on a particularly long road trip, so it's uh, yeah yeah. This is nice and easy. Yeah. Uh, so we're still on don't die tech. Okay. Uh, we've talked about favorite clicks, favorite teams, best and worst. Sure. Uh, so now we move to the best and worst ways to run don't die tech. I am bad. I'm bad at giving advice on this because I just don't run it. So uh, how about the don't run it? <laughs> That's the best way to run it. That's a weird <laughs> question somehow. Right. You know? yeah. Like. What do we mean? <laughs> uh, you try not to die. I guess it depends so on. You say it's like the worst way to run don't die tech is to die. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess the only the only general answer I can give without talking about specific pieces and teams would be conservatively. Yeah. Like yeah. don't you can you can afford to play reactive with a don't die team in a way that you often can with other teams, so you don't have to take risks. Um, and you've got the opportunity to kind of see what your opponent does, like let them play their hand and then try to beat it. That can still be dangerous, but I mean, if you have to err on the side of caution or err on the side of, you know, this is my opportunity for victory, um, err on the side of caution. That's all I can really say. Yeah. Pretty hard to be general. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's one of those teams where you don't expect to kill much. You don't go forward guns blazing, but at the same time, you do have that little bit of safety where you can go guns blazing and not lose because of it. Yeah. So. Uh, and also playing reactive is the thing that allows you to kind of see how your opponent's going to play it. Because when you're playing against Don't Die, a common strategy, as much as it's kind of lame, is to, to kind of play slow, play conservative, try to give up nothing, and in worst case scenario, you roll off. And if that's the way your opponent's going to be, then, then as the person playing Don't Die, you've got to play a little more aggressively to make sure that you actually get the points to secure it. Um, so like if they're going to play slow and try to force a roll off, then you can be more aggressive and you've probably got the cushion there if you're playing Don't Die and they're not. All right. Uh, next up. Best and worst ways to beat them. Well, the worst way is to not score any points. <laughs> uh, the best way is to look at the characters that quote unquote Don't Die because there's always a way to get rid of them and you gotta open that door. You gotta get that door open, you gotta get the, the kills or you just kind of minimize your points and also don't die which is you generally being a little bit more evasive so like if you found a way to score points on them in some might like be at the smallest amount a lot of the times the characters who don't often die are not super oh, i'm gonna be unkillable like oh sorry i'm gonna kill everything rather as opposed to un they're unkillable that's kind of why they're there <laughs> so ultimately i think one of the best ways to approach that is get what points you can and just make sure you abuse the fact that very frequently these characters aren't super aggressive. I don't know, Tom, what do you think? I agree. Uh, like, it does depend a little bit, as you said, on, like, can you score any points at all? Like, is this such a don't, committed don't die tech that they're basically giving up nothing? Or is it a thing where you can maybe score 40 or 50 points but you can't get anything else? Uh, I would say, first of all, don't, don't fear the roll-off. Um, yeah. Don't fear the team. I kind of already said it in the answer to the last question. Like, I would employ the strategy that says it, they haven't won until they've won. So don't go super aggressive thinking that you've you've got to try to do everything you can. I'm going to throw everything at them, and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Like, you can do that, but I wouldn't. I would suggest doing the opposite, which is play your own team conservatively, assess what points are most vulnerable on your team and what points are vulnerable on theirs and what they're likely going to have to do to try to get points from you. Make that as difficult as possible. Um, and so you can put yourself into a suboptimal position to get points from them as long as it's putting them into a suboptimal position to get points from you. So you basically play your team as though it were a form of don't die. Uh, make it kind of a hard to kill in that way. You know, that might be making sense? Yeah, you make perfect sense. At least to me. I don't know. I understand Tommy's though. Amber, anything you want to add? Um... This is going to sound weird, but, like, if you're going to do your Hail Marys, make sure that they're going to work. Um, whereas, like, the probably the best way to look at that is if you have Collins. Um, or if you like, are Collins. Or, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker is so fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you have Collins, like, really, really kind of gauge how, um, like, the actual percentage of them working. Because obviously, like, you have the probability of dice just not working, but, um, <laughs> um, you're automatically giving them five points. And that's, like, five points that they wouldn't have had otherwise because it is your decision that is giving them that five points or three points right. when you're doing your call-in. So, make sure it's worth it, especially against a team like this, where if you are not going to score anything, there is absolutely no reason to use a call-in. Right. Yeah. All right. Next, which of these don't die figures seemed hard to kill, but ended up being a lot more easy to kill than you think? Daredevil. I was gonna say Daredevil. Like, <laughs> you don't even have to list them. Yeah, but Daredevil. You can, you can list them. Did, yeah. Or did he give a list? Or no, he didn't give a list. Oh. Just, which, in general, which ones do like are hard to kill or, or fall under the hard to kill banner that actually aren't as hard to kill as you think? And Daredevil's a big one. Um, Outback Hulk. Yeah. I mean, you can get the if you roll those doubles, he's pretty easy to yeah, kill. Yeah, like you, you don't. There's not a lot of control over over whether or not you roll doubles, yeah. but you will. You should roll doubles one time out of six, which doesn't mean like again. We I always talk about this, and we never. At some point, we should really talk about how probability really works. Yeah. A one in six chance doesn't mean that you would expect to have to roll six times before you get it. It's yeah. that it happens one time out of six. It could be the first. It could be the sixth. It yeah. Could be it could never happen, but odds. 
are never quite as bad as they sound mathematically in a way. Yeah. Uh, generally, probabilities are discovered in a in a, a state of like three thousand. Yeah, yeah, you, like, different testing cases. Probabilities normalize over very large uh, sample sets. Yeah. But one of the things that they that you can learn in statistics is that there is the odds of something happening, and then there are the odds of following the odds. Yeah. Um, and so, an individual example. This is the thing that kills me. Every time somebody says, you know, I needed an eight, and I didn't roll it, or you know, even more so, like it's like. I needed to get a five or higher, and I had a problem, and I couldn't do it. I mean, what are the odds of that? And it's actually pretty good. The yeah. odds of get of of getting a five or a higher are good, but the odds of following the odds on a sample set of like two dice rolls are not good at all. So the odds on the roll may not be great, but the odds of that roll at that moment are are uh, really hard to pin down. That's why the the Tyler Spees thing works so well. You got a sheer volume of rolls; some of them are going to hit. So it's yeah. more important to roll a lot than it is to have a much better probability on an individual roll, at least from a statistical perspective. He's also got that added level of not rolling the dice for one of his characters. Oh, that too. <laughs> I mean, he's doing a, couple, a few things. Yeah. I'm, I'm simplifying, but you know what yeah. I mean. Another one is the first time your Ironheart dies to the first attack it gets hit by, it gets hit by, that's, <laughs> that right there yeah. is like, when you were like, maybe it is a little easier to kill. Again, like Tom said, there's odds that it can happen, and that's just how it feels when it occurs. Like, well, or you know, when you roll the back with the absorbing man, first time somebody did six damage to you and you rolled a six to match the damage. Like, well, that didn't feel good. Yeah. <laughs> so, or like the super police. Yeah. You know, the super police are, are one that no one ever talks about, but yeah, you know, it's because they can die in a single attack in the same way that Ironheart can. Except yeah. that Ironheart's up a support piece and the super police are an attack piece. So. You know, you know, Ironheart's more useful in the long run, but they're all pieces that can go down very quickly. You just don't have to be, af don't be afraid to attack them. I think I'm on the right road. Uh, well, you're on the left road. Let's go over here. Uh, Orchard Park, what West Seneca? I, I, yeah, don't worry about it. I'm Fuck not it. worried as much as I'm confused. <laughs> Let's not be worried. About it. All right, any Amber, anything you wanted to add? This like anything you were like, this no, isn't gonna die. No, I was actually die. thinking of the absorbing man. Oh <laughs> yeah. So. Um, all right, so now we get to speculate. Are there any figures do you think that won't that will be don't die type characters in the future? Phoenix. Uh, <laughs> Fair. I'm assuming Phoenix is going to have some kind of resurrection to her, and we're getting at least two of them, so if not more. Well, that's right, because they're doing a Phoenix Colossal and a Prime Phoenix Colossal too, aren't they? Well, we're going to we're gonna get Phoenix and we're going to get Dark Phoenix. Like yeah. that's pretty much a given. That's the safe assumption, as it were, on the uh, X Men Adventures. I don't know. What do you think, Tom? can't think of any. Mm. I think I'll make a, a Hulk that's particularly hard to kill in the future. Yeah. I think they tend to make, like, the occasional Hulk. Yeah, All right. at some point they'll probably do it with Deadpool. Yeah, I mean, they have done it kind of have already. With the, with the, with the uh, first one, Prime... Web of Spider-Man one? Yeah, the Web Spider-Man one, and the the Prime from the X... Yeah, Deadpool the and the X-Force. every time he took damage, right? Yeah, he, yeah. Was, he was a toughie. Yeah, he's one we ought to forget, but he's yeah. really good. All right. So, the, now we're moving into individual questions. Thank you, Malcolm. We love your rush of questions. Malcolm Rush. <laughs> um, for tournaments with mostly new players, should I consider just pre-creating teams and distributing them randomly? That is a kind of a slippery slope sort of situation. What you want to do in this case is give, it, it, this is how if I was running it and I had this concern, I would give players the chance to build teams because people need to have the chance to make a mistake and they need to kind of learn in such a manner but at the same time uh oh toll booth eh? yeah, it's a toll booth all right uh not not a big deal i think we can kind of keep going um all right uh so Actually, we'll, i think this is the point we this is the point we have to take the pass yeah <laughs> driving the u.s still for some reason not known to me exactly it's still kind of a mystery you know what? we'll pause this for a second all right we got that covered um, anyway, uh, so I feel like people should have that chance to make mistakes, but at the same time, if it's you're planning on having new players uh, and we're so talking so new that they don't have a collection, yeah, have a couple teams that are pretty simple to understand ready, but I, I would always suggest that give players a chance to build on their own because that's one of the beauties of this game, I think. 
Are we talking about like people who've never played Hero Clicks before, never held Hero Clicks before? It just says mostly new players, so I, it, it, I'm assuming there's a level of interest in it. And if it's completely like never touched Hero Clicks before, then yeah. Obviously, if you're teaching them how to play Hero Clicks, then you should bring some figures and show yeah. them how it's done. But I think that people should get into the habit of learning to build teams probably fairly early in the going on. Like once they are past the initial how to play the game hump, then better to in kind of encourage them in directions than it is to dictate it since yeah. that is the big fun of the game and a lot of people that get into it in the first place get into it because they enjoy watching their superheroes fight each other so what is it if you're a huge uh, DC guy and, and you want to just play your Superman team then what good is it going to be if you're like here play this X-Men team it's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, Brittany, you wanna... yeah I actually want to build on what, what Tom just said because one of the things that we always say really early on where it's like well, how do we get people into Hero Clicks? More often than not, people come to the game because they like the movies, they like the comics, they know the characters. So, one of the first things we always suggest doing is like, okay, well, build a team with your favorite characters. Like, just, these are characters you know, you have some kind of connection with, and it's sometimes, like, there's a little bit to it where it's easier to play the game if, like, you have kind of a base understanding of the character itself. And, or if it's just something you like and you're connected to. So I feel like, like Tom said, if you have some guy who's like, I really love Superman, I'm all about Superman, awesome, here's an X-Men or an Avengers team. Like that's not gonna keep that, that person interested or may not want them to keep playing the game or uh, keep learning the game because it's like, well, I, have, I don't care who these characters are. Right, yeah. All right, uh, hopefully I didn't ruin your day. <laughs> <laughs> no. Next up, uh, how do you feel about pog generators? Which generator is the best <laughs> ever, and why is it Dr. Demonicus? Okay, I, there's a spelling error in here. I feel like he spelled devil dinosaur wrong. All right. All right. All right. All right. How do we uh, feel about pog generators? I mean, I know how I feel about pog Have generators. You Jason? <laughs> I love them. I think, I think it's a great mechanic. I think yeah. that they've not really had a lot of issues of it being completely organ. Have we ever watch listed a pog generator as it happened? Do you know? No. Never yeah. Happened. I think that says something. Uh, that they have never been so abusive. Their effectiveness has gone up and down over time and certainly I, I agree that the best ever was probably Devil Dinosaur for a number of reasons. Um, but there are a bunch of good ones. And I like the fact that they've done different things. They've tried making autonomous ones. They've tried making ones where their move actions don't count towards your total. They've made fighting pogs, they've made defensive pogs, they've made just like filling pogs. I've never really played Tyrannus, but I often think it would be fun. You, you played against it, remember that battle royale I had Tyrannus? Yeah, I love it. Like these are, uh, they've, they've done lots of things. Pog generation is a, a great archetype that is really a more recent uh, addition to the game, but I think it's been a really positive one. I actually remembered my exact words when you guys, when, when Tyrannus was in one of the packs that got passed to me. I think I outwardly said, you idiots. <laughs> you gave me Tyrannus. I think it was actually Jay who passed on Tyrannus. I was like, you moron. <laughs> no, so You've good. given me the, the ability to troll. And boy, did I ever troll. How many critical misses did Mike make with that iron, with that uh, Thor? The, 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 was that the battle royal where he couldn't just hit anything with that uh, chase with, Thor? With the chase Thor that was slowly <laughs> falling apart. Like oh, yeah. Yeah. Piece yeah, it off. fell apart <laughs> in like three pieces. Like <laughs> the hammer part fell off and then the arm fell off and he just missed everything. That was hilarious. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. That was fantastic. Mike often complains about his dice, but that, that was a game where it really, there was, there was some empirical proof that the dice were not working for him that game. And how do you feel about Pog Generators? Um, I personally love them. I'd love to see more. I would love to get more physical copies of the Pogs that are generated, because that's obviously a mechanic that's not going anywhere. Right. Um, I think it's one of those things where it's like, my enjoyment of them is um, tenfold because of how much Jason loves them, and how much it's just, it's not a Jason team unless it's created more figures than you started on the board. <laughs> to the point where, like, many years ago now, like we're going back to the team based days, that uh, we coined the term figure factory for Jason, and that every team, if it wasn't a figure factory, it just wasn't going to work for him. <laughs> Although I seem to recall the Sentinel, the Master Mold was like the original figure factory. He, he was, uh, yeah. Wait, which came first, Giant Size X-Men or Captain America? Uh, they were very close to each other. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. 
remember. Because Captain America had Squirrel Girl and Falcon. Well, to be fair, those are <laughs> slightly different. Those were pieces that generated yeah. bystanders. They weren't full blown factories. Yeah, yeah. whereas they, they you couldn't act them as use them as a factory and just like churn out. Yeah, I feel like I actually feel like they were yeah, they're close enough together that yeah. All right, we're gonna pause for the uh, troll troll booth exit now. <laughs> troll booth. Troll, troll booth. booth. The troll booth. <laughs> oh, keep that off the camera. <laughs> right. Um. Troll booth. <laughs> we can't be the first to have thought of it, but it no. is very funny to think about it. Oh, it's pretty funny. Uh, where were we? Pog generation. Yeah, do we like it? Yes. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, I think the they're... best devil dinosaur. But I, like in a way, that's that is um, uh, simplifying things because there have been so many good ones. That why yeah. why do we have to embrace any one when they I, can all? Be our I'm I'm gonna say that while I love devil dinosaur, Alyosha Craven is my favorite f Pog generator. He generates one. But damn, does he make it real good? <laughs> We're pretty close here. Like, I think the next question is probably the last. Yep. Ooh, this is a hard one then, too. Uh, maybe we should hold off and. I don't know. We're not that close. Like, we okay. Have, we have a little time. All right. Well, we have like three questions left. So, um, next one, and this one's going to be hard for you and me, Tom, I think. Um, and it's appropriate because tomorrow is WrestleMania. Mm. And this, uh, this fan wants to know what is the best WrestleMania match in WWE history? Uh, I have a personal stake in this one. Uh, it happened in Toronto, and I may have accidentally been part of starting something stupid, <laughs> which was a rock heel turn, because it was The Rock versus Hulk Hogan uh, at WrestleMania in Toronto. I don't think you started that. We were all there doing that. Yeah, ro the Rocky Sucks chant. <laughs> we were all uh, A whole bunch of us start. Well, I mean, I know me and like the guys I used to uh, do pro wrestling training with, my, my for that small amount of time in my life, uh, we all started our uh, Rocky Sucks chant. <laughs> At least we in our section. It's such a big stadium. It probably started the other and it kind of came into the middle. Yeah, well, it's such a great thing. Do you think that was the best match in WrestleMania history? I, it, 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 it was a great moment for me, for sure. Um, if I was to pick a best match, though, at TLC, the, the first table ladder chair match with uh, really? the Dudleys, the Hardy Boys, and Edge and Christian. Um, mostly because the Hardy Boys were such a thing. They're, they're my thing in, the, in high school. Right. Uh, and Amber can attest to this. What happened when the Hardy Boys came back, Amber? Oh, my God. It was like meeting teenage Jason. <laughs> it was great. What a great moment that was. Yeah. So I'm going to say that that TLC match definitely up there with for me. It, it's a hard thing to pick because, I mean, I love, don't get me wrong, I love Macho Man and uh, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. That was like taking them all there. <laughs> but all right, all right, Tom, you go. Because, well, uh, because uh, like the my favorite, let's let's think, let's say my favorite greatest match, which is to say it's on the, it's probably on the short list of greatest matches, and it's my favorite of them, uh, is probably uh, Taker Michaels at WrestleMania 25. That was a really good match. Yeah. Um, but I think that honestly, if I had to choose a single greatest match, just and it's been so unfortunately, it, it, it just it, it'll never be the same again. Was the WrestleMania 20 Triple Threat with uh, Benoit Michaels and uh, Triple H? Like obviously, Chris Benoit uh, and everything that's happened has forever tainted watching any match with him. Um, but it doesn't change the fact that that match really was uh, marvelous, a marvelous Triple Threat. Amber, you've seen like two WrestleManias. <laughs> yeah, I was actually just gonna say, um, as of this taping tomorrow, WrestleMania 35 um, is <laughs> happening, and my very first WrestleMania that I ever watched was 33. <laughs> so I don't have a big enough frame of reference. For but that's it. okay. Within those two that you've seen, what was your favorite match? Um, I, I don't know. I'm trying. I've watched so much that I can't really even. Like pin pin down or just remember. Oh yeah, that was a WrestleMania match. Right. Um, but I think probably my favorite would have been the um, the Andre the Giant Memorial match from last year. Battle Royale. Did you like the yeah. Battle Royale last year? Mm -hmm. That was the one that last year was not the one Mojo Raleigh one. It was when Jeff uh, Matt Hardy won. Yes. Bram Wyatt showed up somewhere in there. Yes. Cool. Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, two more questions. Mm -hmm. This one might require some math, and it's a silly one, so we get to be silly for this one. If Marvel and DC characters played in a charity softball game where Hulk would have to be bat cleanup, uh, how big would the stadium field have to be, and what shenanigans would ensue? Um, I'm sure at some point Mr. Mix's Spitalik will uh, ruin Superman's day and change ball trajectory. And it does depend on who the pitchers are and what powers they have. Uh, how big would the stadium have to be for a game? How big is Jupiter? <laughs> and 
what's we also it's not so much how big the stadium is how deep would uh, how much extra gravity would we have to add to the area given certain certain players right do we have to add gravity to kind of even out the hulk or do we just have to make a really big stadium so that well, home runs make sense for like the hulk and superman in a world where people can fly the outfielders have an enormous advantage <laughs> and, and another thing too right <laughs> like, it Which, doesn't it doesn't seem like anyone would get a home run in yeah. a world where there's like people who have super speed and flight <laughs> yeah I, that's why i feel like jupiter is a good is a good starting point <laughs> well i would actually say the opposite which is that it shouldn't be larger because they're more likely to have a possibility of at least missing the ball if it's in a smaller stadium yeah fair point like if somebody hits it real hard they'll have less reaction time if we assume that it's a home run once it leaves the the stadium um then I would say a normal size stadium, or even smaller, like a like a ballpark. So at least it gives a chance for there to be one before the super fast flyers are are so fast that they get the ball before it's on the leaf. I'm going I'm I'm going to also add to the set. I feel like Batman and, and the Hulk or Superman and the Hulk should be required to be pitchers. Game would go much faster that way. <laughs> Did you ever read the uh, the comic book, the Hulk comic book in the '90s, where he rewrites, uh, Peter David rewrites the. Uh, you know, there is no Joanne Mudville this day in case he's lost the battle. Whatever that, whatever that old American uh, poem is about uh, the, 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 the ball player. This is and one he, I've missed. <laughs> he rewrites it, and uh, basically the whole plot of that issue is that the Rhino and Hulk both join Major League Baseball. <laughs> it's a good comic. You should check it out. Um, I am going to defer to the episode of the original 90s X-Men animated where at the beginning of one of the episodes just for the hell of it all of the like the main roster of the X-Men team are playing softball and you get to see like Gambit explodes one of the bats and like, <laughs> Iceman like freezes so that they slide past the plate instead of actually saying like it's fantastic like you actually get to see them play out like an actual just hanging around it, they're not fun fighting anybody or anything it's just like an everyday casual game of baseball and like rogue and storm are flying to catch it and stuff like it's fantastic it's probably like a five minute click clip at the beginning of one of the episodes but i feel like that is like the perfect example of how a game like this would go yeah right it's so, like you know that uh, a 90s x-men series was good for little bits like that but we are here Let's see if I can get the store uh, in of, frame. There's probably a Jeep in the way. But. Yeah, there's a Jeep in the way. <laughs> we're here. Yep. We're in New York. Uh, so we're going to start off with the tournament, and we'll come back with the last question and how yep. we did in the tournament. Yeah, we'll talk about the tournament. All right.